Welcome everyone. This is a, another episode of the Chaos and Comics preview show. My name is Chris Sarda. Today I am going to be talking about uh, the uh, DC Comics releases for April 2021. 20, uh, I have already released one for Marvel. Uh, I feel like there's maybe a lot more to talk about there, for me at least. Um, Pre-orders, I have a whole $9 set aside for DC. I can't even really remember what they were, to be honest. And I don't know how it equaled $9, so we'll see. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to buy DC throughout the month. There's a few things that I just will want to grab uh, right off the shelf. But uh, but yeah, uh, you know, DC is not, whatever reason, hasn't grabbed me as much uh, lately. But uh, let's talk about it. So um, first up here, coming out in April, is uh, a Ruby Justice League number one. So they're going to cross over the Ruby world, which I know nothing about, uh, with the Justice League. And my understanding is there's been some success doing that, like with Black Hammer and stuff, so uh, that people uh, generally like it. But it, I don't know how many I don't know how many giant Ruby fans there are, or if this is just a way to get people to recognize what Ruby is. Maybe I buy it, and if I have a daughter or something, I realize that oh, she might like Ruby. And I should be getting the Ruby comics. Um, they got a lot. They got some good, a um, uh, couple good uh, cover artists on it. So Mirka Andolfo and um, Simone DeMeo. So uh, that is not something I'm going to buy at all. Uh, it's also uh, uh, the cardstock's four ninety nine. So doing the whole cardstock thing. But uh, it does have a, a a good team on it with uh, Marguerite Bennett uh, writing it. Uh, I also see uh, Truth and Justice, number three. So uh, I don't know much about this one. I think it was, this is something that was a uh, digital first and now it's being printed, is my understanding. Um, but uh, nothing that grabbed me. I, you know, I've been seeing this solicited since number one. Uh, not something that's really, really going to turn me. And then we have the uh, undefeatable, most important thing happening in, uh, in, in, in the world of DC uh, are the Batman comics. So let's just, we're going to count to what's going on with, uh, with, with Batman in April and how many books are coming out. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to, uh, they're actually a little bit better at covers than Marvel. Marvel does way too many and, and DC really is about two or something. But we'll, we'll, we'll take a closer look though. So we're going to be at uh, Batman 107. Uh, so we're, we'll have already, we will have already left Future State and been right back in on James Tynan's uh, run. Jorge Jimenez is on the art, which is beautiful, uh, and um, you're gonna get, uh, you're gonna get the old Arkham Asylum story. And uh, who knows what else James Tynan has planned? Uh, I think he got Joker out of his, uh, out of his system. With the Joker War, I, I feel like, even though I didn't care to read it, and I do think I'm over Jokered, I feel like Tynan got a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a, to me is a misconception that Joker's be that Joker's overused, because uh, while it's true, you did have two, you know, two years of, of Tom King, or three years of Tom King, who used Joker sparingly, you know, not not zero, but sparingly, and he was mostly a side character. Uh, and then Joker wasn't prevalent in Detective Comics at the time, and, and he'd pop up here and there. So the truth is, is that we actually did get a big Joker break, and then when they brought him back in full force, number one, the comics sold. So it's just the people that are annoyed by Joker that are the loudest. Um, and I'm one of them, but I'm trying to think of it a little bit more critically. Uh, the comics sold, for one, they, you know, uh, James Tynan is started selling comics, especially being able uh, to start like he did. Uh, but also, you know, he, he got over it, and he didn't have anything to do with the three Joker story that was happening alongside it. So, uh, next up is Batman Black and White, number five of six. Uh, Lee Weeks is doing the cover. You have a whole bunch of writers on this. Um, and, I, you know, I've heard good things. It's an anthology book, though, right? So they could be hit or miss. This was one I had planned just to pick up on. If I saw it on the shelf, you know, the only Batman I'm reading is, is Batman Catwoman. And you know, even I'll admit is that 
as much of a defender of Tom King I am, even I'll admit that's not really a Batman book. It's Tom King writing a Batman book. It's a different thing, right? So I thought I was going to pick it up probably, uh, and then uh, and then I just never have. And so what's going to make me pick this one up? What grabs me is that Kieran Gillen and Jamie McKelvey, or Kieran Gillen's doing his first uh, Batman story. I think his first work for DC actually, and, and Jamie McKelvey is, uh, of course, his uh, his uh, artist partner on uh, the Wicked Divine and. Um, and uh, uh, the other book slips my mind, my, my, my mind now. So that alone is probably going to get me to get it. But yeah, I, I do cringe at the thought. I know I'm getting other stories. I do cringe at the thought that I'm buying this for, um, for the reason that Karen Gillen's in it. You know, and I'm looking at the other people in it. So uh, uh, Jamal Campbell, uh, who is the artist on Naomi and, uh, and Far Sector. So he's going to get a story in there. So, I mean... Hey, I'll do it. It makes it. It works for me now. So, uh, Batman Black and White, something I'm actually getting. Not pre-ordering though. This is not my eight bucks that that I'm pre-ordering with. This is something I'll just grab right off the shelf. Um, and hey, it's three three covers. Like I told you, they don't do that many covers. This one has three. Uh, something I'm enjoying and other people aren't. Uh, in April, Batman Catwoman number five will come out. Uh, the common thing to say is that hey, maybe this reads better in trade or as a hardcover, and I do think that's true, um, but if it's true, then do that, you know, if, if you're having trouble enjoying yourself issue to issue, then you know, wait for it to come out in hardcover so that you can, you, you can take it in the way we, most of us took in Vision and most of us took in, uh, or most, I think most of us took in Vision and Trade, uh, and then it's probably hit or miss in Mr. Miracle, people were grabbing that and, and not. So. Uh, that's what I would say. There's a lot of time jumps. In fact, that's Tom King's new thing. All three of his books have uh, these weird uh, time jumps that, uh, and they're not weird. It's a method of storytelling, but I understand how some people would get confused by it. But uh, it really reminds me of a, of a film called, and I've mentioned this somewhere, Manchester by the Sea. It, as you're watching Manchester by the Sea, you start realizing that you're not in the same time period. There's really, when the scene changes, there's nothing to tell you you're in the past or the future or the present or whatever, however you want to look at it. Um, and in a lot of ways that happens too in Batman Catwoman. And you you just have to figure it out through the context clues of the story. Like uh, Selena Kyle's old, or you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, so I get how that could be confusing, especially reading it with a bunch of weeks in between. I get confused, I'll admit it. Um, but I've sort of, in my head, I've sort of adjusted for it. And that goes uh, across his books, which we'll get to in a little bit. So I really like it. Uh, I think that it probably is a, uh, a trade weight, though, for most if people want to dip into it. Because at worst, people will read this because they hate Tom King, right? That's why they'll do it. Um, next up, we are uh, getting right into the groove of Batman Superman. Uh, this was a Josh Williamson book. It looks like uh, uh, Gene Luen is getting it. Ivan Rice is drawing it. So that's actually that's actually pretty cool. Um, it's amazing that this book isn't uh, isn't higher up there on people's uh, lists of things uh, or uh, on popular books. You, you you think of Batman as being the flagship Batman title, and and then uh, Superman can go either way. Sometimes it's action comics, sometimes it's Superman, sometimes they're not even called those things. Um, but, but you think Superman, Batman would bring, you know, would, would be a main, main title, uh, or sell a little bit better, uh, and, uh, and it doesn't. So that's, I've always found that a little bit weird. And I, I, I know Justice League does okay. Uh, I know Avengers only does so-so. So it's a little bit weird the way, uh, the way buyers are. And I think that's more of a comic buyer thing because I think that there are just people that no matter how bad it gets will always buy Batman. And there are people that no matter how boring it gets will only, hey, will only buy or will always buy Amazing Spider-Man. They just won't stop, right? And, uh, and I think that's what sort of like maybe suppresses a book like Batman Superman, even though you'd think that that would be a huge book. Um, uh, Batman the Detective, number one. This is going to be by Tom Taylor. And uh, 
Uh, it's called Dark Detective. Why does it say The Detective? Oh, it, it's right there on the, on the cover. So uh, Tom Taylor's getting his book, uh, Andy Kubert's Drawing It, which is a great, a, uh, a great little team there. Very good, uh, very good chance that we're going to get something better than we expect. I'm even considering picking this up, but this is going to be more of a more of a maybe, uh, you know, at the maybe level where uh, if I don't have a lot that week and, you know, I've taken long, maybe by April, I feel like I've taken a long enough bat break. Um, the simple fact that it's a European adventure, it's a mini series, so I know that I don't, I don't have to worry about it too much. It's six, uh, six issues. Um, and he goes to the United Kingdom. So what's interesting though is Tom Taylor is Australian. So obviously he writes a lot of stuff set in the United States, so why not England? But you'd almost want him to do, uh, uh, you know, the X-Men had their, their down under phase. Um, I always want to, would want to see Tom Taylor write uh, the, uh, the country he knows. Uh, some of these heroes, that would be pretty cool. I think, I, I would think. And now we have, uh, they've actually doing three covers for this, but you get the blind cover. So that's the, you know, that's the third, that's the C cover. Um, see, and now, now we start getting more into the filler. So Batman Urban Legends, you know, I don't know. Maybe some of this is great. I think it's going to be like a, a Bat Family thing. I know Zdarsky's in it, but I, I mean, two big anthologies in there. So the new Batman anthology series continues in part two of Chip Zdarsky and Eddie Burroughs' epic Batman Red Hood story. Uh, Jason Todd has taken a man's life. That's no, that's not a surprise. And now his mission is to keep the dead man's young son safe. So um, it would have worked out better for me if I got the Kieran Gillen story and the Zdarsky story in the same book. But unfortunately, we need uh, we need two anthologies, and one of them separate because it's black and white. I guess you got three covers for that: a Derek Chu cover, which is pretty cool, and a Matina cover, as is normal. I think we're all bored of Matina. And by this time, I almost forgot this was happening, but Batman versus Ross Al Ghul, uh, Neil Adams is writing and drawing this. So, you know, I've just not heard, I love Neil Adams' old stuff. I'm probably not as big a fan as most people are, um, but I respect what he's, what he's done. And, um, uh, and, and a lot of that isn't because I'm an idiot or Neil Adams, I think Neil Adams is overrated. I just think I'm at the age where I saw Neil Adams copied a lot. So I've seen his influence, you know, in other styles that I might like a little bit better, but I still love him. Uh, and it makes me sad that people are iffy about his new work, uh, particularly this one in Fantastic Four. So I, I, I'm like rooting for it to be good. I'll probably never read it though, to be honest. And then we get up to uh, a Batman book I might actually be reading uh, with a B cover that is one of those that I think will keep popping up like in auctions and, and uh, will you know, keep its value, at least keep it out of the dollar bins, would be the Jenny Frizen cover uh, for Catwoman number 30. Uh, I am uh, very excited for two things. And I don't know Fernando uh, Blanco very well. Um, that's who's the artist on it. But I do love Rom V. Uh, I am on board. Uh, I'm on board for all his indie stuff. And then I'll, I, I'm going to decide what to do with like things like Catwoman. I'm more likely to buy Swamp Thing, to be honest, which we'll talk about in a bit. But um, I, uh, I, um, it's something that's you know, it's something that's making me more interested in it because I did start reading Catwoman and it was okay after Batman Fifty. It was okay, um, but it was an easy one to quit. To be honest, when the pool list got too big, kind of thing. Uh, but the Riddler, man, I'm ready for a good Riddler story. And if if it's got to be in Catwoman, that's fine. I'm happy to see it in Catwoman. And, and Rombi doing it just makes it a little better, and this Jenny Frizen cover makes it even even easier to maybe buy. I may I get annoyed by things being four ninety nine for the cardstock cover and the same price, but uh, oh man, that's a pretty cover. And then probably the most mixed feelings I could possibly have is seeing Dan Mora on Detective Comics. Uh, I'm happy for him. Uh, I think he's a great artist. I want him to make money by going on to a Batman book. I would have loved to see him get the real Batman book. But the reason I'm so disappointed is that if he's doing Detective Comics, and I think Detect, oh, no, actually, after Future State, my understanding is, and the previews show this, is that Detective and Batman will go back to once a month. Um, uh, if he's on Detective Comics, 
or that means that he he's going to have a little bit harder time drawing Once in Future, and Once in Future is one of my favorite books from the aforementioned Kieran Gillen. So I will be I'm disappointed about that, but uh, I do want to see his Batman, and this is something I'll this is something I'll I may have jumped off of it by 10:35, but I may uh, still be on it then. I this is something I'll read uh, starting next month, and uh, I'll go ahead and try that. So. Um, and then the rest of the Bat Family, we got a. It's just amazing how many Bat Family books there are. So you got Harley Quinn. So Stephanie Phillips is still writing that. You're either on board with that or not. It's starting over from number one. So all the weird stuff that they were doing before is gone. Harley Quinn is getting a black, white, and red trade paperback. Now, this one, I got to say, I actually read some of these because they were digital firsts uh, also. And uh, this is 1 through 17 in print for the first time. So there were actually some pretty good ones in here uh, and a lot of good writers. So it is, it is not a ripoff if you get a good discount uh, to get this book. I'm not sure how many pages it is, but um, it's not a ripoff. Um, and then James Tynan will be uh, on his uh, second... Uh, Joker, or a second issue of Joker, giving Joker his uh, own his own book now, and hopefully that's good for the people that do want more Joker or will eat up more Joker, uh, and then he can get on doing what he was doing in his Batman, which I think is going to be really trying to use the characters he created. So, uh, you know, having a, a character like Joker as the main character is tough because normally what you can do, like what happened to Harley Quinn, for example, is they just become sort of an anti-hero. But you really can't do that to Joker. Um, you know, I, it'd be really weird to do that to Joker anyway. Uh, the same, the question right now is what's happening with Cruella de Vil in, uh, in the new Disney movie, right? You can't, it's going to really suck to humanize someone that skins dogs, you know, F her, right? Joker's the same way. Somehow, in in his uh, interminable genius, um, Hickman was able to humanize Apocalypse, and it worked. I didn't. I don't want it to work, but it did work. But uh, it, it it's going to be a good challenge, and this is one I might, especially if it turns out to be very good, not if it just turns out to be uh, six or twelve issues or whatever. That if James Tynan succeeds at that, that it it'll be. Um, very successful having a you know the title character being uh, an antagonist to some extent he has to be written as a protagonist and and you you're really gonna fail if you start making people feel sorry for him. Um, Man bats getting his own his own little mini series uh, by uh, a, a couple creators I'm unfamiliar with. It'll be at number three. Uh, next Batman Second Son. So I guess they like the next Batman. And why not? And if John Ridley's going to write it, let, let them do that now. Let them uh, get on that too. So readers know that after the events of Future State, Tim Fox is the next Batman. But what's his origin story? So that might actually be pretty cool. There's no reason not to have a next Batman, uh, especially if it's a, a in this case, Afri African-American guy. Um, uh, of course, being uh, Lucius Fox's son. But, uh, and, and you're almost trying to get a, a little Miles Morales thing here. Like, what's a way that we can make a cool new Batman and, and not just be the generic... I, I shouldn't call us... I'm a, I'm a generic white guy. I shouldn't call white people and guys generic. But not be the, what the common thing is for the, uh, for the long-standing superheroes, which is white males, uh, generally. So um, that might work, you know, but you, you give it to John Ridley. Yeah, it, it might be better to get like a, a great comic writer in on it. So that's where, that's where I'm a little bit iffy there. Um, I, I do want to commend DC for something. A I mean, I don't know that it's good or bad. I, I think if you're a big comic fan, you're like, you're annoyed by all the number ones, like resetting. Um, so let's commend them for like sticking to, for the most part, their uh, their numbering convention. So we get off a of future state. If this was Marvel, all these all these new books would have been number ones. But now we're at Nightwing seventy nine. So uh, on the other hand, no one's gonna buy it. You're either a Tom Taylor fan or you're a Nightwing fan. Um, but I don't I don't I don't see what that does to increase sales. And in that sense, um, 
don't you want Bruno Redondo and Tom Taylor to get more uh, to get more money? So, well, hey, Dick Grayson has inherited Alfred's fortune. That's pretty cool, and they're really holding out this Alfred thing, right? Yeah, a lot. I think a lot of us thought that he would be uh, back without a doubt uh, by now. Uh, Joshua Williamson, unfortunately, and maybe this is going to be great. Maybe he has a great idea for Robin, but they've dropped him on Robin, and it, it looks to be a real standard sort of story to me. Um, just after reading this solicit, so after learning of the deadly league of uh, of Lazarus tournament, Damian Wayne has a new mission: winning the tournament. So pretty generic story, and that's not to say it's not going to be good. Um, Joshua Williams is actually a very good writer, one of those guys that hits all the beats and uh, does things correctly, seems to have good ideas, and just hasn't gotten his, uh, I mean, he has gotten lots of critical acclaim, but hasn't gotten his, like, where he's just lifted up very high. Uh, has a very famous run on Flash, with people, which people really love. So, I mean, maybe as a great idea, it ends up being uh, good, but it sounds a little bit generic for me, probably mostly for uh, Batman fans. Uh, and uh, I am unfamiliar with uh, Gleb uh, Melenkov. So, hey, DC's done very well uh, getting great artists. Unfortunately, not getting them um, popular enough. Looking at you, Mikhail Janin. So, or Janin. Now we're going to jump to the DC Universe. So, all of those books, multiple covers. I mean, the vast majority of DC right now is the books we just talked about. Um, you know, with the exception of Ruby and Justice League and whatnot. So, I mean, the Bat family is really what's running things right now uh, in general. And um, uh, I didn't see any, uh, I didn't see any, I guess, no, because Batcat's there. I was going to say, I didn't see any big Black Label books. We, if you've been following DC, you know that like Black Label has had a very, uh, at least a 50% Batman focus. So I didn't see much there except for Batcat. Uh, next up, we might jump through some of these uh, pretty quick. Crime Syndicate number two. So this feels like uh, this feels like DC's just shooting at you know just trying to see what works. So with Starro ravaging the planet and controlling superheroes and villains alike, the fate of the world rests in the hands of Ultraman, Superior, and Owlman. In other words, win or lose, humanity is doomed. So that's gonna you know Owlman whatnot. That's gonna really just rely on whether you. Uh, really like Flashpoint, right? So a uh, Tyler Kirkham cover is just the B cover, though. So anytime you get a Tyler Kirkham cover for, um, uh, you know, that's not a store variant or something, then that's uh, might be able to jump on it if you do like to cover by or, or like beautiful art. Okay, we got to the very first comic that I am, you know, that I have on my pre-order. And unfortunately, it's not going to be there very long because it's about to end. That is Far Sector number 11 of 12. Uh, Jamal Campbell on the, on the cover. They're doing two covers. Mirka and Dolfo is doing the second cover. Look at that. Um, I can't even read the solicit. I'm at, like, I read the first trades worth now, so the first six. Uh, I'd, the reason I stopped was to get a shot at solving the mystery, of the mystery I thought was happening uh, around issue four, but it looks like it was less of a mystery, less of a mystery book than I thought it was going to be. Same thing with Batman's Grave, by the way. I thought that was going to be a mystery, too. Um, but yeah, we're on 11 of 12, so that's still on my pool list. I make sure that I get that. Uh, uh, I'm very happy with what I read. I do love N.K. Jemison, and Jamal Campbell is one of the better artists uh, out there, so I'm happy to see him uh, get his uh, touch on a lot of these new characters, uh, especially in the sense that they are uh, people of color. Um, so that's great. So he's, he's at, Jamal Campbell's actually... When you think of the fact that he's doing uh, Joe from Far Sector and Naomi uh, and, and a couple other things he's done, um, it's one of those guys that might be a lot more famous in a couple decades, right? Because he's the guy that drew the original version of it kind of thing. So, you know, we'll see. Flash still going strong uh, after it got to 750. They, they didn't use the, the two-digit number anymore. They went right back to the big numbers, 769. Uh, you get two, uh, two issues of that. I think people have been confused. Um, I get confused by Flash a lot. It feels like you could just do anything with them because of all the time travel and cosmic things. Like, it just... I mean, I know a lot of people liked what he did, what happened in Death Metal, and generally I did like Death Metal too, but 
Flash is just so weird and meta now that you could just make something up and have them run really fast. And uh, to me, it's a little bit too much. It doesn't grab me anymore. Um, but I say that from the point of view of uh, there's some huge fat Flash fans. If they sat and gave me the cool stuff to read, maybe I'd be into it. Um, but I mean, how much more can you tell stories? It's like Flash's powers now are almost worse than uh, magic-based powers, where you could just do anything. You know, that was always the problem with magic. There's no limits. Just do do whatever. Do anything. Uh, but Flash is almost getting worse. Like, it could just change reality on a whim. You know what I mean? He just has to jump out. And, and like, six of them can do it. So... Anyway, that's the way I feel there. Green Lantern is starting with a new number one. Grant Morrison is off his long, weird run. We're getting some Jeffrey uh, Thorne. Dexter Soy being on Soy being on the art is probably going to make me buy this. I probably start following Green Lantern again. Uh, I do want to catch up to the Grant Morrison run. I didn't read the Blackest of Night stuff. I'm probably on number eight of season one. So. Um, but hey, I might, I might be reading a lot of Green Lantern because I'll be catching up on two Green Lanterns and I'll probably pick up this number one. Um, if you guys uh, follow comic book, uh, comic book channels on YouTube and stuff, um, uh, the Comic Burrito, uh, Todd on the Comic Burrito is a big Green Lantern fan, so he'll always be on it. So I'll at least have someone to talk to uh, about it. So uh, Green Lantern number one, Jeffrey Thorne, who I don't know, and Dexter Soy. As a new Green Lantern series begins, the newly formed United uh, Planets and the Guardians of the Universe hold an intergalactic summit to decide who can best serve and protect the cosmos from danger. I, so, it, was it a complaint what I said about Robin that it just sounded generic? Uh, so that just sounds generic too, but maybe that's what we need. You got 12, you had 15 issues of weird-ass Grant Morrison, and, and maybe you just need Green Lantern to like sort of come back and tell interesting, normal Green Lantern stories. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, people just really got tired of Tom King. I didn't, again, but, you know, 85 issues was per perhaps too much of, of being different on a, on, a, on a flagship book or a big book like Green Lantern. Uh, Justice League is still going. Bendis, Brian Michael Bendis will have taken it over at this point. I think he's taken over at 59. Um, uh, and I really do like the, you know, I do like the mix. I get it, you know, Superman, Batman have to be there, but Black Green Arrow, Black Canary, Aquaman, Hot Girl, uh, join forces with Black Adam. So a new world conqueror, that's going to be the Justice League. It's, I mean, this solicit here is really the problem that I have with DC is that everyone is so, so powerful. And that happens in Marvel too, right? But it's just everything has to be huge because of how huge... Superman and Wonder Woman are power wise and Batman is in intellect wise, etc. etc. So we will be on in April, we're gonna be on number seven of Rorschach. And I'm I'm gonna take a while to guess that this is not this book's not selling great. Uh, I'm also not too worried. I'm not too worried about it because uh, I still think it's awesome. So uh, it's another Tom King book. He's doing this one with George Fornis. It's a, it's very Controversial because it's using those characters that uh, Alan Moore used, and and he hates that. And then the question is: is as an artist, do you really do that? Um, do you just take the job you're supposed to take? Is Alan Moore being so? It's a good conversation, really. The fact is, is that it happens, and it's very weird for it not to happen. It would be very weird to me for. To, it's very weird for me for Alan Moore to expect them not to use these characters. It's the whole point of paying him originally, right? And uh, did he get fucked over? Of course he did. All of these work for hire guys are fucked over. I mean, they all understand the way it works. They're all fucked over. So, um, you know, when I, I minus that out, I'm reading a Tom King book that has all these weird time jumps, just like Batman, Catwoman, and, and just like Strange Adventures. Uh, but I, I, I am enjoying the hell out of it, so... You know, there's a chance that I, I've just gotten into so many battles with Tom King about Tom King, especially during his Batman run, that uh, I just like anything. I, I'm self-aware enough to read that. But when I'm reading these stories, like, I also, like, enjoy myself. Like, I also enjoy what I'm reading. I find them challenging enough, and uh, I find his writing style very unique. I can't think of anyone that's like Tom King, to be honest. So... 
that's where I am with that. And, and Rorschach has been good. This Rorschach has probably been the harder of the three books happening right now. And I know B Batman Catwoman is on only on number three. But so far, Rorschach has been a, the hardest one for me to read issue to issue, uh, to remember what happened or to figure out um, what's going on there. So, you know, that's the thing. I probably will have to come back around and read it uh, in trade, like I keep saying. But I don't know. Uh, I, I, I find myself not doing that that much. Um, that I just get behind and I never actually go and read them. So, Sensational Wonder Woman will be uh, being written by uh, Andrea Shea. So, I actually don't know anything about this. It looks like it's a War World book. Um, I was hoping it was going to be Sensational Wonder Woman. I was hoping it was going to be one like the Brazilian Wonder Woman that we just saw. But I, I, I actually don't know anything about this book. So, uh, we'll, we'll move on. Suicide Squad number two. Um, so, A... This is one where they started all over, and this is probably smart to do it with a book like Suicide Squad that's, you know, not high up there uh, as far as rankings. Uh, of Tom, for the people that really like Tom Taylor, um, you know, I know they. I can think of a few people that really enjoyed Suicide Squad, uh, Tom Taylor's run, and that'll be available on DC Infinite, right? Whatever it's called now. So. Um, there's always that option. You could just be a huge Suicide Squad fan. But if that Tom Taylor one didn't really catch on, I, you know, Robbie Thompson will have to do something really amazing. Someone, like, it's almost something that has to meme. Something will have to catch, and, and it'll, it'll start going nuts. Uh, next up is my other pre-order, and that is Swamp Thing number two. That is by Rom V. Uh, Mike Perkins is on the art. I think Mike Perkins did the, the Future State book. So I, I don't even know. I'm not reading solicits for this. The only thing I know is that the Swamp Thing is, is, is Indian this time. And I think it might take place in the future. Um, not quite as far in the future as the Future State one did. But yeah, so um, this is an easy one. And this, is, this will be the first time I'm reading a Swamp Thing book month to month. I was reading Justice League Dark. Um, uh, which is not happening right now. It's that's it looks like it's been canceled. Oh, well. or I think it's going to be in the back of Justice League. We'll see. But um, uh, it's the first time I'll be buying a Swamp Thing book month to month. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, and then a a kids book, Teen Titans Academy. Tim Sheridan's on that. It's not something. If the regular Teen Titans or anything else doesn't grab me, this is not going to grab me. Uh, and then we have Becky Cloonan on on uh, on Wonder Woman. 771. Um, I, I'm going to read Wonder Woman. I'm going to read uh, Azarello's Wonder Woman before I, I bother with any of this Wonder Woman. And I think that it's been in a bit of a, a little bit of a funk. I don't think people really grabbed on to Gail Simone's version. I didn't hear great stuff about Tamaki's version. Um, in fact, enough that people are, I've heard people be worried about her uh, doing detective comics, right? So, you know, I wish everyone the best there, but. Uh, if I'm going to read Wonder Woman, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to read Dead Earth again, or I'm just going to get through Azarello's, uh, Azarello's run. I really did enjoy uh, Volume 1 of that Wonder Woman. So, you know, I, I'm just trying to work really hard on not, I, I read so many Volume 1s and I don't read the whole runs that I'm trying to stop, trying to stop doing that. Um, like, you know, Immortal Hulk, I got to Volume 2, like, just stick with it, just read them all. You, you pay $10 a month, just read, read everything that's available. Just churn out there. Why do you need new comics? Why do I need new comics? Because I do a podcast about the new comics. Um, so this is one where I'm not. I didn't sub to it. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. You know, put it on my pool list. But I'm gonna be. I'm willing to try uh, what Philip Kennedy Johnson is doing on Action Comics. Willing to try it, and I think he's. Uh, and he's also doing Superman too. So I. That's even uh, going to be a fun contrast. Uh, you know, the, there was enough, like, people that didn't like the Bendis stuff that, okay, I didn't even really try it, to be honest. And that's another one, too, where I, I need to go read All-Star Superman, to be honest. I want to go read All-Star Superman. It, like, I wasn't going to try the Bendis stuff just because it was new and coming out. But uh, a, a new writer on it, one I like, Philip Kennedy Johnson, uh, getting on this. Uh, this should be his second issue uh, by, you know, in, in, in April. And uh, I'd like to really read, and I, I would like to see there be, a, if you have the same writer on, on these two books, I'd like to see there be a definite difference between Action Comics and the Superman um, self-named title. Uh, 
And uh, I think that's going to be a, a good comparative thing. So not criticism, not that it's good or bad, just like something, some interesting way to criti critically think about two books. So Challenge of the Super Sun. So Peter J. Tomasi is on that. Tomasi has some big fans. So I think some people will even will try this just because Tomasi's on it. For, um, you know, a lot of people were really into what was happening in Detective Comics. Not a lot of people. A few people were passionate about what was happening in Detective Comics uh, when he was writing that. So you may get some Super Sons stuff. Uh, fans from that. Uh, there's a lot less baggage on some of these characters, so that would make sense. Um, and who do we got? Do we got Sean Lewis on art here? It's hard for me to see who's the artist on the new Superman book, but uh, we've already talked about that. Superman Red and Blue, so, you know, anthologies could just be only so good, guys, so we'll see, we'll see what happens with this. I feel like I, I forgot this existed until I just, until I just read it here again, and I went through these solicits uh, prior to this, and uh, this completely left my memory, so uh, we'll stay, <laughs> it could just stay not in my memory. And then we have a few DC comic kid stuff. So Batman and Scooby Doo. I'm sure that's really cute. And uh, and then also Sc Scooby Doo. Um, I thought that uh, we might get a uh, this Batman versus Batman and Scooby Doo mysteries. One of twelve. Well, so it's only twelve. This is one of those books where like my one of my friends is going to get it, and they're going to be like, "It's better than you think. It's better than you think." I always feel like I can guess. I always feel like I can guess that it's better than you think. Book. Um, so a few months ago, it was uh, uh, My Little Pony and Transformers that I knew when people were going to buy that, they're going to go, it's better than you think. It's better than you think. Uh, and let's get into uh, Black Label. This, uh, this uh, comic store still calls it Vertigo. They never changed the name. Good for them. Good for them. So American Vampire, 1976, number seven. Uh, if you're a Scott Snyder fan, I know you're on this. I know some people jump on this without reading the original American Vampire. I have the American Vampire trade out there, just like I have Witches, and I've never read either one. And I know not reading Witches is a, is a sin to a lot of people, so people might think I'm, I'm crazy for that, but uh, I'm not. I swear to God, I just haven't read it. I haven't got to it. And I was planning to read Witches. I haven't had it for years. I was like, well, it's October. I'll read it for Halloween month, and I didn't do it. So now maybe I'll wait till next October. How about that? Um, the Dreaming Waking Hours, so excited that they, um, oh, was it G, it was G. Will Wilson on Wonder Woman? I think I said Gail Simone. I, I might be getting confused there. I get them confused sometimes. Uh, the Dreaming Waking Hours, number nine. Uh, this was really good. The Dreaming, the book was really good from the beginning. Uh, the Simon Spurrier was writing it and then someone else took it over. The art was beautiful. I feel like that book, didn't get its its proper due, uh, and 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 in the spirit of Neil, Neil Gaiman, just the weird shit, you know, the weird stuff. Uh, and then Gail Simone, or G Willow Wilson takes over the dreaming, waking hours, and uh, it it got more down to earth. Uh, it's still hopping between the dreaming and all the weird dream hubba blue, right? But it felt more down to earth, more human stuff happening in in the real world and the dreaming, and it was really good. Uh, and and I think it was supposed to be just six issues. Uh, and then uh, and then they decided to continue. There was a seventh issue that acted like a, a one-shot, which I really enjoyed. And uh, I can't remember if I've read number eight, to be honest now. So I'm on board with this dreaming. And uh, in general, I'd want to catch up with all the Sandman stuff because it turns out I really enjoyed the Sandman universe stuff, what I read. So that means, I, I mean, I got to go and make sure I read House of Whispers and stuff like that, the stuff that I, I didn't really get into. Lucifer with by Dan Waters was great. So... Um, a lot of good stuff there. It's almost though like the the reasonable thing say about people say about Hickman's X Men. There's just too many books, right? And you feel like you got to read them all. Um, and uh, and for a minute there, I would tell people that you didn't have to read them all for Hickman. But then Ten of Swords happened. Uh, in the Dreaming, you don't have to read them all. You could just pick and choose. I've had a good time reading some of them. Uh, but I've liked them enough that I'm going to even read the others. So, uh, Sweet Tooth, The Return Man. Sweet Tooth is a big... So, The 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 Return, this will be the end of uh, this miniseries by Jeff Lemire, who also draws it. Uh, and Jeff Lemire has a very particular style as far as an artist goes. So, um, it, it works. I'm just glad he also works with other artists. Um, where Daniel Warren Johnson, I think he should just go from here on out, just write and draw his own books. Um... But yeah, Sweet Tooth the Return. So 
uh, the original Sweet Tooth is a big hole in my reading. It's something I need to go and read uh, along with Nailbiter, but uh, Nailbiter I might not do. I didn't realize Nailbiter was uh, such a big series before Nailbiter returns. So, and then I'll go through the collected editions real quick to see if anything pops out. Um, but you get like Batman by John Ridley, The Authority, a lot of the normal stuff, um, and you'll get a uh, you'll get uh, uh, DC tends to keep their stuff in in print longer. Um, at Fables, the Compendium. So, a lot, so much of Fables, though, is, is just available in dollar bins. You should almost just read it that way. Uh, and then a bunch of Flash. So nothing really there. So we're going to cut this out. And uh, I want to thank you guys for listening. Again, my name is Chris Sarda. This is uh, the Chaos and Comics DC April 2021 preview show. And you can find me at Chaos and Comics on Instagram and Twitter. And, of course, on YouTube, where there will be more videos, even though this is audio. And if you're a sports fan, um, look up at Chaotic Sports on Twitter uh, and uh, at Chaotic Sports Podcast on Instagram. And then we are doing a lot more videos there. Um, right now, my most consistent partner is, um, is the MMA guy. So there's a lot, there's mostly MMA on the channel today. But uh, we're going to really expand into, into something bigger there and, and just talk sports. Just jump on, you know, let me, let me know. Let's, you know, I want to keep it like nicer. Um, like crazy friends talking sports is the idea. Um, so I'm not interested in getting into fights or, or things like that. So same with comics, really. I, I'm so, I do this because it's fun and I'm trying to find the like-minded people. You know. So anyway, thank you guys for listening. This has been uh, a good time. So thank you for coming.